Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create some patterns just like the ones that you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, there's all kinds of different patterns of different levels of intensity, I would say. Um, and there's some really good ones and there are some, to be honest, ugly ones. And I'm gonna show you how to create the difference between some good looking ones and some uh, not so desirable ones. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the app that I'm using, if you're familiar with the YouTube channel, you probably already know, it's called Leonardo AI. And basically what it does is it's an image uh, or a text to image generator. So effectively you tell it different text and it will create an image based on the text. And the better you are with prompting and the better you are with creating different, uh, I guess you could say, models and fine-tuned models and, and basically teaching and training your app, the better results it will produce. And so today we're going to take a beginner's approach to this and I'm going to show you how you guys could do it with just a click. All right, just a few clicks and you'll get the results that you want. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I'm on the home feed and I just type in the word seamless. And when I type in the word seamless, uh, seamless is mostly referring to the seam in reference to the corners of any kind of pattern, right? And so if we were to stack or tile this or repeat after one after the other and make these images stick to each other, it would be seamless, right? So uh, a good way to look at this is if we take, let's say, let's use something a little less complicated, let's say like this pattern, right? This pattern has certain parts that it connects to, okay? So for example, here, right, there's this, I guess you could say this blue section, okay? And when you would connect this, right? When you would connect, when you would put another image next to it on the left-hand side, it would connect to this section here. So that's how it's kind of seamless. And you'll see that when we upload to other platforms and show you how it kind of looks. But um, that's what makes it seamless, right? So when I search the word seamless, all these different designs that contain the word seamless in their prompt show up. And uh, I think one of the coolest ones or the most uh, abstract ones was this design right here and this design, which is uh, pretty amazing, honestly. And that's what happened when you search seamless. Now, let's go ahead and get into how you can actually create designs for yourself. So if you see a, a, a pattern that you like, let's say it's this, you can go over here and hit remix. In my case, we could actually, I mean, we could do that. Why not? Uh, in my case, I had created, I was playing around with a bunch of different patterns and you could see here, I was creating different ones. So I created these, I created these and so on and so forth. Here I got some camels, right? Like a camel pattern type of thing. Here I got like this pyramid type of thing with these plants. Here I got once again, more pyramid style stuff, um, which really just look like a bunch of like 3D triangles almost here's like another thing that's similar uh, i could go ahead and show you a little bit more right here we have some kittens or some cats um and then here i tried to do like a guns and roses type of theme which if i probably worked on a little more i could probably get a better result but uh you saw the results here this is an anime style rose flower type of design and i played with that around for a little while and here I've got some strawberries that I created. Um, and by the way, I also want to show you guys this this image. Look at the way it came out. It says the word Dreams Time on it. Now, Dreams Time, if you're not familiar, is a place where you can go buy images. This is why I tell you guys, you have to be very careful with AI. It can all be tracked of where it comes from. So with seed data and all these kind of things, this image was, the, the information was clearly taken from a resource. Now, that resource could be a copyrighted trademark resource or whatever it is. Excuse me, trademark, not really um you know, uh, copyright, but it depends on who the art artist is and all this kind of data. So let's just say it was a Getty Images, you know, logo. Uh, that becomes a problem because, um, you know, I know for a fact that Getty Images has sued other companies uh, who did this with uh, AI. So be aware of these kind of things, all right? But regardless, um, here is an image of strawberries. Here is another image of strawberries here. Uh, here we have a picture of my attempt to make some mango pictures, which this does not look like mangoes. I don't really know what you would call this. Um, just some weird hybrid of a fruit of some sort. I feel like this one looks more like mangoes, but it's still, it's a little off. Uh, and then here, 
I was still attempting to get it done. Here we got some good pr productions here. Um, these were, uh, this was the original. Okay, and then I made some attempts to fix that, which I think it came out a little bit better. Um, here was like a 3D look. Now, once again, I don't think this looks like mangoes, but hey, um, you know, it is what it is. Then we got some more productions here. And if I keep scrolling down, I really like this lemon one that I created. Uh, I think it looks really cool. And once again, all these are seamless. This is probably my favorite lemon one that I created. You could already see that I spent the time to upscale it. Here was a cool 3D one that we have, um, which is really cool. I actually, believe it or not, like the original better than the 3D. I think the colors, the way it came out, looks better, but that's just me. Um, and then we, here we have more designs. And I think something in terms of like if we were having a t-shirt or a pair of shorts or even like a bed sheet or something, I think these flat style designs would work better than these 3D style designs. Now that's just my general opinion. I think it just depends on what your preference is, but you guys let me know what you think. And uh, I like stuff like this as well. So this is pretty unique. Um, obviously you can go in and edit stuff. And I showed, I made a video on how you can like remove certain things from certain images with AI. So I've shown how to do that. So if you wanna see that, I'll leave the link in the description for that video. Uh, but yeah, here you could see there was an attempt of some uh, more lemons here. I created some pizza patterns. Uh, so you can see here, these are one of my favorites. I think this one was my favorite overall. Um, did I upscale it? I didn't even upscale it. I might as well upscale it right now. Uh, and I should do different upscales to test the different results. But here, once again, we have another pizza pattern, which I think this came out good as well. Um, and you could see here, I have simple, simple uh, prompts. I, I, it's not like I do something crazy advanced. Uh, I was trying to get some like Italian flag prompts going on. Let me actually show you guys all my generations uh, by going over here to my personal feed and then showing you my uh, all section. I'll just go ahead and scroll once again. And you could see here the view. All right. I'll try to scroll a little slower for you guys to actually catch it on video. Um, but yeah, here we have another image. Um, and then here I was trying to get some flags done. They, you know, struggling to have some flags built. I think you can make stuff like this into a pattern. It probably wouldn't be a flag, but it would be interesting as to what it would look like. Um, here we have this cool style, like rose style design, which I think could look really good on a t-shirt. Um, uh, here I tried to create like a, like a, the hydrogena type of plant, but I think it kind of understood it as like some sort of uh, hydrogen, you know, manufacturing plant or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's why it says it shows all these boxes, but I took the same style and I created variations. I have like butterflies here. Here I have uh, these flowers. Um, not my style for t-shirts, obviously, but uh, if, you know, if you like it, pretty cool. I think there's a customer base for pretty much everything out there. Um, here we got some frogs, right? Uh, which I, I think for the type of animals, they could be a little wacky. Like, uh, you know, I'm not really sure what that looks like. But I think once again, there is a customer base for pretty much everything out there, depending on how far you can expand your market, how, how far you can expand your territory. Um, here, this is once again, another plant. Uh, wouldn't really know what this is called. Um, but maybe you guys know what kind of plant that is. Let me know in the comments. It says here, Vietnamese lotus flower. Tell me if that's actually the truth. I have no idea. I think I like these better. Honestly, these basic type of uh, pa patterns, uh, seamless patterns, are generally, generally for me, much more desirable. Um, and then I have some more patterns here, right? So I was testing different patterns. I think out of all the patterns, this one was, was my favorite. This one was my favorite. Just the detail on the flowers, the colors, uh, I would say this probably probably my favorite. And uh, these are okay. I generated from these from other creators here on the platform. So, and as you can see, I've been playing around creating other designs, but um, if you want to see how I made these other designs, check out my last video. I'll leave a link in the description to that as well. But now let's go ahead and jump into actually creating some patterns. So the way you do that, like I said, the first way you can go over here, type in the word seamless, Okay, don't type in the word pattern because the results are not going to be as good. Type in the word seamless, all right? And I'll just let this load for a second. And then you could find something you like. So, for example, if you like this, all right, you can go over here and hit remix, okay? You don't have to 
do too much work on there and then hit generate. Now, something that I will say when you create different patterns, there are a few things that you want to take into effect. The first thing you want to realize is the prompt. Okay. Second thing, negative prompt. All right. Negative prompts are harder to work with when you're dealing with patterns. This is just my realization. The third thing is you want to focus on sizing. Sizing does make a difference. And then finally, your token count. Okay. Now, something that I've noticed is sometimes when I'm creating prompts, the design won't pick up the actual prompt that I want for whatever reason. And if that's the case, you could just go over here and turn on prompt magic and it will be more literal with what you're added in the prompt. That's essentially what prompt magic does. So here you could see, we're going to get a different, you know, a different design. I could just tell you this right now. And, uh, it won't be like a little variation. It'll be not significantly different, but it will be different. So let's just wait for it to load. There you go. Look at that. So this is with prompt magic turned on and that's the difference, right? So I've seen other videos like this where people show you how to do patterns and stuff. They don't talk about prompt magic. Prompt magic is very important. Uh, there was an example that I created here where I had the roses and the guns and I was telling you guys I was working on developing it right here. Um, I, I, I had the word guns, I believe here, right here, pistol guns in the pattern, but it was never realized. It was never actually made when I turned prompt magic on, it added some of that stuff. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. So yes, use prompt magic. Okay. And if there's something that's not desirable, you can go ahead and remove it with this section. Now, if you want a stronger prompt magic effect, you increase the effect. So let's go ahead and test that out now. So this is with no prompt magic on. This is with prompt magic at a 0.4. And then let's go ahead and hit it with a full 1.0 uh, prompt magic strength. And let's see what comes up with. Now, some people might ask me, what's the difference between prompt magic and guidance scale? So guidance scale refers to how strong the prompt overall is in terms of its weight in words. However, the prompt magic will take the literal aspect of the design. So if you say something like, let's just say vector 4k art station, right? Prompt magic will look at it from a literal aspect. So it will look at those certain things and try to include it. Guidance scale is just the overall look. There are some images that have nothing to do with art station 4k vector. Um, but if you include those kind of things, then it can increase the, the results. And you could see here, there's a drastic difference between something like this, right? something like this and something like this. Now, if we go ahead and upscale all of them, let's just go ahead and upscale all three, okay? Or four in my case, um, we'll see the differences in their full glory. And I could say here that all of them, I think have a time and place to be sold. These are all buyable designs, whether you're selling on Etsy, whether you're selling on Redbubble, whether you're selling on Zazzle. Um, I've said this before in my courses, the print on man courses, I say this publicly to you guys, you don't have to be the best designer in the world, but you have to have a buyable design. If your design genuinely doesn't look good, it's not going to make you money. And these are all buyable designs. Everybody can sit here and say, you know what? Um, if I was being completely fair and honest, somebody would buy this design. Somebody would buy this design, okay, um, in the upscale format. I think it looks pretty tremendous. And somebody would definitely buy this design, right? So uh, you have to be realistic with what designs you're creating. And I don't think you should just go ahead and list everything, uh, especially because there's a certain amount of time in the day. And especially if you're one manning it, you know, if you're, if you're doing this solo and you're doing this print on man solo and, and you don't have a helper or you don't have somebody to work for you, by the way, all the parents listening, if you have kids, you know, make them do some work for you. I, I, why not? They're going to get some uh, good experience. Um, you know, learn how to, uh, do work online, I guess. I, I mean, I don't know. I think it would be pretty cool. Get your kid working on something like this. Uh, if you do, let me know in the comments. That's interesting to me. But regardless, um, yeah, uh, pretty much this does not take a genius to figure out. And overall, I think it's very easy to do. And um, it's just by one click, you know, you could go ahead and start by creating variations. And remember, I, when I had the uh, prompt, this was the original prompt that somebody else had created, not me. And it created these results. When I turn prompt magic on all the way, it created this. Now let's go ahead and perform a test where we keep prompt magic all the way down. So let's go to like 0.1 and let's go ahead and generate. My assumption logically is that it's going to be closer to something like this. Um, that's just my opinion, but we'll go ahead and see the actual results here and let the results speak for themselves. And then what I want to do is I want to test different, um, different prompts uh, myself here. So 
Uh, yeah, there you go. So you see, you see that style that, you know, it's getting a little bit closer to the style. I think genuinely I like, I think I like this better, honestly, than I do like this. And we could compare. I'm not saying that this is bad by any means, especially the upscaled version. In fact, I think the upscaled version looks better than the original because the, the light blue of the, or the dark blue of this texture really stands out to me. I think I had a pair of shorts that looked like this at one point. Um, but uh, I think overall, the large graphics to me is very attractive. Now, when we go ahead and download this, let's go ahead and hit save image as. And let's save it. And let's open it up. I want to show you guys the sizing. And I want to talk about uh, if it's important to upscale or not. So, if you created the image, let's go ahead and see this image. This image is 2700 by 2700, pretty much, okay? Now, that's not a bad size, okay? You can get away with that posting that on Redbubble, on Zazzle, on Etsy, whatever, and selling it to different people. However, if you want to upscale, I've spoken about this before, but I have an app called Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo, Luminar Neo, pronunciation, it doesn't matter, right? Tomato, tomato. Anyways, um, this app, I, I've spoken about this before, it's a AI editing app, so I'll show you how I can edit different images with this and uh, what I can do. However, something that I will say once again is that um, uh, this is a subscription-based tool, it's not free. Okay. Uh, however, it's much, much cheaper than going out there and upscaling every single image. There was a YouTube video. I, I forget who posted it, but there's a lot of people who post different things where they show you how to upscale. The problem is with the upscales is the software to upscale with is it, it cannot handle. Uh, I think it was it was a software called Replicate. Replicate.com has all these different repositories of how to upscale. Once again, the problem with upscaling on Replicate is that the memory is so low, even if you pay for it, the memory is so low that it can't actually do large scale images. So let's just say I'm uploading this image to Redbubble. If I upload this to, to Redbubble on a 2700, the, the flowers might be a little smaller than, you know, than desired. If I want them to be really large, I have to upscale the image. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to go over here to Lumnar Neo, and I'll leave a link in the description at the cheapest place you can get subscription. There are some expensive places where you can order this. I've seen it as high as something like 100 something a month, and then I've seen other websites sell it for 15. I've seen some websites sell it for nine. I'm not exactly sure on the price that I pay, uh, but I'll leave a link in the description to the cheapest price where you can get it at the moment all right but anyways uh, I'm gonna go ahead and upload this uh, pattern here so let's go ahead and do that and this is the upscaled version and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and the first thing I could do is I can edit it okay so I can jump over here and edit the design now there's a lot of different features I'll just tell you with the features like the different images like this like these ones here uh, what I like to do is I like to go over here edit develop and smart contrast I drag smart contrast up all the way and that really does shift the power of the image right it, it really does I mean the character jumps out at you the background is more in the back I mean you know no pun intended but really that's kind of what I'm I'm aiming for here and you guys could tell like I'm not making this up this looks a little dull and then boom smart contrast really really brings it out so it does look a lot better like that I can also do enhance AI and enhance AI what it does is um, it, it does kind of if you look here if you just look it makes the white the, the brighter parts more bright and it makes the darker parts more dark uh, that's not always the best thing to do you just have to weigh it based on how you enjoy the design so I could go like just a little bit so like maybe like at a seven and it will look better than what I expected before and sometimes you might have to zoom out a little to get a glimpse of how it would really look so this is the original this is all the way up this is halfway through or close to halfway and this is early in the beginning like accent number three so that's not bad if you create a pattern with a lot of noise and you want to lower that and what is noise noise is like these little details you can go ahead and play around with that as, as well so I got I clicked here um, uh, remove essentially noise on low so maybe a lot of these smaller details it will go ahead and remove and you could see the AI is currently doing its own thing here and you could see kind of how it looks so this I can click on the original and this is what it looks like so it didn't really remove anything 
in this case. Uh, if I go on high, my suspicion is that is going to a suspicion, excuse me, is that it removes these little small lines. But in my case, I'm not going to do that. If you wanted to remove these small lines manually, like let's say there's something you don't like, like I'm trying to find a mistake here in this art. Let's say this tiny line here is a mistake. I can go over here and just erase it like this. Okay. Let me go ahead and blend it a little bit and then hit erase and look what it's going to do. Boom. You see that? So it just depends on how you like your artwork being done. So like, you know, like I said, it just depends on what you want to do. So there's so many different things you can do here, but that's not the point of this. I'm going to go over here to my settings. I'm going to drag and drop this into my upscale and I'm going to upscale this at double. Double is good enough for me uh, because by then, if it's 2700 by 2700, I'm looking at at least you know, a, a five, you know, 5,200 by 5,200. That's good uh, in terms of the pixel size. And if it's 5,200 by 5,200, we can have a respectable size when we upload it to platforms like Redbubble, like Zazzle, etc. And by the way, um, if I look at all my sales across all the board, whether it be on Zazzle, whether it be on TeePublic, whether it be on Redbubble, even on Etsy, uh, sometimes even Society6. For patterns, my strongest sales have come from Society6, they have come from Zazzle, and they have come from Etsy. Uh, for Redbubble, I've made a whole video on this before. I'm not saying that you can't make money with patterns on Redbubble. The income is just less. You have to look at the numbers. If you do a basic search on Redbubble.com, I'm going to go ahead into an, an incognito tab because I don't want to show the actual account that I'm running on Redbubble right now. But if I go on, on Redbubble.com and I just search the word pattern, okay, if I search the word pattern, there's three and a half million pattern designs, three and a half million that include the word pattern. Um, it's just not realistic that you're going to be seen. Uh, you know, unless you take your design, and some of them are not even patterns, they just take up space, but if you take that, you know, keyword, and you try to rank for the keyword pattern, and you're not doing any social media marketing, which once again, we've shown how to do this on YouTube, with Instagram, we've shown how to grow a following consistently every single day, we've shown how to do, do all these things, but if you're not doing that, um, you're probably never going to get sales. And the reality is, is there's so many people with good art that don't get recognized on that platform, not be because you're missing out or you're doing something wrong. Um, it's just because of opportunity. There's so there's lack of search and there's more opportunity. Um, and so you really want to pay attention to how you're selling your art. You know, creating good art is half the battle. Right. The other half of the battle is how you're selling it. And when I say how you're selling it, you have to look at the platform you're selling on. You have to look at your tags. You have to look at your titles. You have to look at your social media promotion if you're going to decide to do any, which, by the way, it's not a requirement. Like for my Etsy stores, I don't do any social media promotion. I don't need to. I get sales pretty much on like passively. I, I find the right keywords. I put them up there. It, it works for me. Um, but that's just because Etsy is its own platform, right? If I do the same thing on Redbubble, it might not happen as strong. I do use uh, social media promotion for Redbubble. And that is might be the reason why I have literally like I literally light my sales up with kerosene and multiply them with Redbubble, not be because I get lucky, but because I use the social media promotion. Now, a little FYI, is anybody who's listening to this, Redbubble doesn't actually award you for social media promotion. I know they tell you that they prefer that and etc., but they tell you that because they want you to, to make them more money. That's not that you know, they don't promote you if you do social media promotion. In fact, they do it very rarely. They have something called like the recommended artist program or whatever it's called, where they essentially take your profile and they put this little badge on it and they show it to the world and they do a new one like every few days or something like that or every few weeks. There was not one time where I got accepted into that program. I use social media. I grew my accounts on Instagram and I promoted my designs through Instagram. Okay. And I got the sales that way. Now, once again, if you're new to the channel, I did not do this alone. I got a lot of help throughout the way. But the point is, is that I use different automation tools to help grow the accounts, to gain the attention, to gain the traffic. And then instead of a design getting normally 
five or 10 or 20 sales a year, it might get 300, 700 sales a year because that design is being heavily promoted through social media. And I don't do this for one design or two designs. I'm doing this for my whole entire store every single day, three to five posts a day per account. Okay. And that's ba- right now in 2023, back in 2022, I would say, or 2021, the late 2021, I'd post three times a day, would be perfectly fine. Now we're looking at three to five times a day per account. So it's a lot of work. It's not something, you know, that I play around with, but it does increase our sales dramatically. And once again, targeting is another aspect. There's so many different aspects to this that go into it. You know, you can't just expect to upload your art on a particular platform and walk away with free money. I mean, that does happen. Like I said, there are certain platforms that allow that, but there's always elements of work into it. And I think a lot of people, when they talk about print on demand, they don't really explain fully what it entails and what it looks like to be successful on a, on a major level. And I'm, when I say major level, I don't mean making two to $500 a month. I'm talking about a few thousand a month, 5,000, 10,000 a month. It takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, especially if you're going to go through the marketplace platform. If you're going to sell on your own, that's a completely different ball game. You can make easily 40, 50, 60,000 a month, but it's not about effort. It's about then skill because skill doesn't come from designing, but it comes from advertising, which is a, comp- like I said, completely different ball game. Um, and the reality is if you're selling on a marketplace, you probably don't have the finances to handle, you know, like a $20,000 ad. It's just not going to work. So you got to start somewhere and a good place to start is with the marketplaces. I, th- I think people have asked me this in the past. They say is a platform like Redbubble. Everybody loves Redbubble because it's such a well-known platform. They say is Redbubble good for beginners. And I say, yeah, Redbubble is good for beginners, but eventually you're going to have to move on. You're going to have to, you know, create your own website. If you really want to start producing serious income, you're going to have to learn how to advertise. You're going to have to learn how to do SEO. You're going to have to learn how to build a brand. And there's really no, uh, uh, nothing around that unless you want to be stuck in the loop, in the treadmill of being paid pennies for dollars and and hundreds of dollars worth of work. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, And something that I will say as well is with my designs, not all of them are perfect. I've said this before, not all my designs are tremendous, but the one thing that you have to ace when you, when you sell on your own websites and your own is the marketing. There's no, you know, there is no way around that. That's something that, um, you know, you're going to have to do. And I think the reason why I had so much success on these other platforms like Etsy, like Redbubble, like Zazzle, is because I understood marketing from every aspect, not just from an outside or an, an, uh, like an like a outside kind of source, like a social media, things like that, but also internally. I understood algorithms. I understood keywords. I understood tagging. I understood titles. And like I said, we have courses on that. We have a lot of things on that. So uh, I'll leave the links in the description. You guys want to check it out, go ahead. And uh, I'll leave a link to this software if you want to check it out. Like I said, I'm not necessarily promoting them. I'm just showing you what I do. I created videos showing how to use this and things like that. I'll leave those links, those resources in the description. Um, And if you have questions, put them in the comments down below. All right. All right. So I have this uh, design uploaded. And this is not using the upscale using Lumnar. This is just straight off of Leonardo after their internal upscale. And I added the pizza design here. I think it's a pretty cool design. And I'm going to show you how to set it up here with uh, your Redbubble account. So whatever pattern you have, you want to go ahead and upload it. All right. That's that's how you're going to want to go ahead and start. And then you're going to take this color here and then change the background to what it already is. I just find that it overall helps in certain circumstances, um, depending on the pattern you have. In my case, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about it. And I'll show you why in just a minute. However, it does help overall. And you want to see here, You want, my personal opinion is enable everything. Even if people are not necessarily going to buy a certain design, still enable it. You know, you never know what people buy. There's a lot of things that um, I personally would never buy that people buy all the time. And you want to enable all the products, like I said. And then what you want to do is certain designs of certain products, you want to go ahead and edit here. And then what you want to do is click choose pattern and then select the grid. So if I click here offset grid, it will mess up the way the pattern actually looks. But if I go here and click regular grid, guess what? It looks perfect. There's nothing here that doesn't look. Now, when I do my design, guys, I keep my eyes on the actual product and I have my mouse here and I'm navigating 
where this thing is going to go. So I like here that this circular, I'm actually looking right here, this circular part of the pizza, I like it right there, maybe like something right here, and add some more flavor to the design. So I'll hit apply changes, and I'll do this for every design, okay? Whether it's me, whether it's my virtual assistant, somebody's getting this done, right? And here, I could do the same thing. So I'm going to go over here, and I, once again, I'm keeping my eyes on this design. I'm keeping my eyes right here. And I can decrease the size. I can increase the size. I can do pretty much whatever I want. So I'll go over here. Boom. Apply changes. Go over here. And apply changes. Okay. And what I'll do, once again, regular grid. And I think this looks decent, right? So certain things like desk mats, because it's so large, and I'm using the default size right now of Leonardo, because uh, I know not everybody's going to go ahead and really upscale past what they already get by default. If that's the case, just go ahead and uh, do it this way. And like I said, it, it fits the purpose. It, it does the job. Um, shower curtains, really good for patterns. Uh, I, I, you know, one of the most commonly sold thing for shower curtains is patterns. And of course, here we have the, you know, the pet products. We'll go over here, hit edit, hit choose pattern. Uh, regular grid. I do have a habit though of clicking offset grid. That's just been one of my habits, but uh, there we go. And we're going to keep doing this. This is something you want to keep doing in order to, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, you know, make sure the design looks good. And you can, like I said, play around with the way it looks, whether you zoom out or zoom in. It depends on your style and the way you want it to look. I genuinely like larger images i think they just look better overall you got here the scarf we got here the regular um and that's why i choose to upscale you don't have to upscale the same way that i've already showed right and some designs just like this for example would look good even if you didn't tile grid it uh but if you did it's not gonna hurt you get what i'm saying it, it doesn't hurt so um it's up to you how you want to set things up this clock is gonna actually look really nice once it's tiled Maybe even I'll set a black frame to match the um, the uh, black background of the clock. I think sometimes those little details do make a, a difference, and maybe even the red hands as a good color for the uh, for the uh, watch. And uh, here we could go to hardcover journal. We'll go here to regular. Uh, grid for the hardcover journals, guys. If I'm doing a grid like this, if I'm doing a pattern, I always want it to um, cover the whole thing. If I, I, I never, I very, very rarely select uh, front and back. The only time I'll select front and back is if it's not necessarily a pattern, like if it's an image that I want to add. Okay, um, but if it's a pattern, I'm going with the full entire thing here. I'll go ahead and hit apply. I'll hit apply on all of these as well. And like I said, certain certain images you don't need to add a grid. So like for this one, if you click regular grid here, I don't think I need to go ahead and do this. I could, but I don't need to. I'll go ahead and leave no pattern here and just scroll down and boom. That looks just as good as it should be. Uh, I'll go over here and hit add sleeveless tops. This one will definitely need a grid. Okay, just the way it looks, save, and really because of the way these things look, um, with patterns, you will get a lot more sales for things like the skirts, the dresses, um, I remember the first time, I still remember till this day, because it rarely happens, uh, when I get a sale on a, on a, uh, a dress, okay, it rarely happens, but it happens, and um, I've had it sell for not just patterns, but other things, but when that does happen, I'm still pretty surprised, to be 100% honest, because it's one of my more rare products that sells. I'm sure for the people out there who are selling, you know, more patterns and things like that, they might have that those kind of sales a little bit more often. I would say with all my designs, I sell t-shirts very frequently, I sell bags a lot, I sell... Um, whether it's a duffel bag or a backpack, I sell a lot of uh, desk mats, laptop cases, iPad cases, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Stickers, of course, I'm pretty sure everybody sells a ton of stickers. Uh, stickers is probably one of the number one selling products on the platform. Um, but that's, you know, like this. And once again, <clears throat> here, uh, I like to match as best as I can the background color to the actual pattern. And to be 100% honest, I don't know who really would buy something like this, but there have been times where people have bought stuff where the image is boxed in like this on the shirt. Now, do I recommend this for all your designs? No, 
I don't recommend this whatsoever. I recommend that you make sure it fills the whole product look. It looks good. Um, but when you're dealing with a pattern, right, most products are going to be perfectly fine except for these top three. You know, all the other ones, you can really tile them pretty good. Um, and they ha they're they pretty much all over prints, right? They can print all over the whole thing uh, with the, with the um, exception of the cotton toe. Other than that, pretty much everything can fit. Um, with patterns, though, I will say that one of the least selling products are the jigsaw puzzles, okay? Um, just because you got to think logically. I mean, you're, you're basically doing the same puzzle over and over on a, on a, or excuse me, you're doing the same thing on a, on a puzzle. Could be a little, you know, drive you a little crazy, but um, overall looks pretty decent. Let me go ahead and set my socks here. Uh, here we got leggings, okay? Uh, leggings is a big seller for me as well. Very big seller. Uh, duffel bags, I think I already said this, but huge seller for me, duffel bags. Um, and I like to charge more for my duffel bags. I like to increase that profit margin. And for those who are not familiar, whenever you want to increase profit margin for a specific product, you go to the product, you hit the settings button, you go over here, and you change the uh, settings, all right? And you'll be surprised. If people like the design, they're going to be willing to uh, spend anything on it. Now, maybe not anything. Let's be realistic. But they're going to be willing to spend a little bit more. Uh, now, for the tags in the title, I've said this before, but when you're tagging and titling, it's very important. This is a newer. So all the images have their designs added, as you can see. And this is a newer account, so I'm not actually going to go ahead and publish this design. I don't want people to find this uh, design, pub uh, this store publicly. Uh, but this store has 948 sales, not too bad. And um, so it's a newer store for sure. And uh, it hasn't, you know, got its full hit of sales yet. But I know we're developing it over time. But anyways, if I was to focus on my tags, this is obvious, right? This is a pizza. I'm going to first keyword, obviously, pizza, comma, right? But then what I'll do is I'm going to go over here and use the uh, Redbubble uh, Analytics Pro, and I'm going to jump onto the tag generator here, and this is a general use tag generator, okay? And I'm just going to type in Italian pizza, right? I'm being a little bit specific, though, uh, for this circumstance. Um, Italian pizza, and let's see here the results, and you get a ton of different results here. I've recommended this before. You can hit copy all, get rid of my blog that I wrote here earlier. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and paste this here. And you get a ton of keywords that you can play around with. Uh, something that I would say is I got this app from botsandapps.gumroad.com. Botsandapps.com, I'm, I'm a big affiliate of them. I love their products. Uh, if you guys want to check them out, click my affiliate link if you want to support the channel. But um, anyways, this is, I believe the tool is, where is the tool here? The Rocket, uh, not the Rocket, the Analytics Pro right here. Okay, they give you a lot of information. A lot of things you could do with the tool. Uh, but here, the Rocket Tagger is uh, the main tagger that I use for my virtual assistants. It's going to give you more specific keywords that are more related, and it increases that relevancy of that design. Um, but this tool here gives you good general information, which I'm just going to use it for this purpose because, like I said, this is a more beginner's tutorial. Uh, if I was to do a more advanced tutorial, things would be a little bit different. But as a beginner, uh, we can go ahead here and just take a look at some of the keywords. We have Italian pizza, Italian food, most iconic foods to eat in Italy pizza, walks of Italy pizza, best Italian food recipes, uh, pizza, uh, easy Italian recipes. So there's a lot of different keywords, but you have to filter the keywords properly, right? You have to look through what keywords you're going to add. So for example, if I want to find more, you know, a different set of keywords, I'll just go back here, go over here, type in pizza and hit search tags, see what comes up. I was a little more specific when I wrote, um, you know, Italian pizza, but here we have Gustavo Pizza Tower, Pizza Slice. Pizza Slice would definitely work as a tag. Uh, Pepino Spaghetti, I don't think that would work because this is nothing to do with spaghetti. Um, here we have Pizza Rat. Uh, I don't have any pictures of rats here. Uh, you could definitely add keyword uh, Kawaii Pizza. And we have Basil, right? There's tomato in it. So uh, Basil, tomato, uh, 
uh, junk food pizza, New York pizza, that would work. Uh, and you could actually, you know, blow this up. You could do some research. You could do search different cities, like in Italy, for example, which is like pizza capital, let's be honest. And, uh, you, you, and you could type in different things like Sicilian pizza, uh, you know, Venetian pizza, Roman pizza, all kinds of different, and you can add the different keywords and that will help from us, you know, a targeting aspect. Um, Gustavo pizza. Let's see what else we got here. We got Pizza Tower Game definitely would not apply in this case. Gustavo, I don't think would apply. Um, Leaning Tower of Pizza would, Pizza would not apply. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we got any more here. Pizza Baker in Crust We Trust. I like that, actually. That's pretty funny. Um, uh, homemade Pizza, that works. Chicago Deep Dish, that might or might not work. Technically, this is not Chicago Deep Dish style, but maybe you might be able to add that keyword for a, a pattern like this. Uh, that's based on opinion. I'll be 100% honest. It just depends on how you look at the pizza. Because I'm assuming if we gave this pattern design to 100 people, okay, maybe 5% would say, yeah, it looks like a deep dish or something like that. But I could be wrong. I think it just depends on, on the person, right? And so, like I said, you find different keywords that are related, and uh, you type them in. So, like, I could type in here New York Pizza, okay? So, New York Pizza, and I could hit search. And that's going to provide me a different set of results. Some stuff more related to New York, you know? Here it says New York Pizza is better. That might be a good keyword to add. Uh, not because people are looking for some quotes, but maybe they're looking for some pizza-related designs. And they're pizza enthusiasts. They see my design. They say, you know what? I actually want to buy this, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, genuine, generally, I do recommend keep the tags related to the design. Now we have a whole entire tagging course. I'll leave a link in the description uh, to Redbubble. You guys can check it out. But um, that is one of the things that you can do uh, when you're going to go ahead and start tagging. All right, guys. So I'm going to show you how to add these patterns on Zazzle as well. So I have a demo account here that I'm going to show you. And uh, I like to, you know, just test different products, of course. I typically like to go to the, for the cheaper products, honestly, on Zazzle. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click Customize This Design. And I'm going to show you an example here of how you can do this on Zazzle as well. All right, so Zazzle, what you need to do is you need to upload your images first, okay? So you go over here, you click on the pattern, you upload it. And the, what I like to do is regardless of where it's placed, I like to go over here, click on the image, and I just go over here and hit this tiling button, okay? And now you have different ways that you can tile it, okay? So for example, there's this centered style, okay? And if I just go ahead and move away, these green lines, guys, have nothing to do with the actual um, design. These are just guidelines that Zazzle inputs. And I can click on them and I could see how they're accentuated when I click on them, right? So you could see here the difference, okay? Um, now, anyways, you could see how the, 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 essentially the design looks, right? If you go over here, click on the actual design again, and then you click tiling, you can play around with how it's structured, how the tiling is structured. Uh, in most cases, guys, it's not really going to matter. Um, but like I said, it just depends on your pattern, your situation, etc. So I go over here and click centered. And of course, with the actual uh, design, I like to go with uh, background, remove white from image. I'm going to go ahead and go background only. Okay, and like I said, this is, in this case, it's not a bad mug overall. Obviously, it depends on the situation, but this is a white mug, okay? And I could go over here and click done and then proceed to go ahead and sell it. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because this is just a demo store, but this is an example of how to get that tiling feature on Zazzle. And you could sell many different products, okay? So, for example, if I wanted to go ahead and sell a, um, let's go ahead and sell, I don't know, what do you want to sell? Let's go to trending. Let's see what people are selling here. Baby shower. We got Mother's Day cards. Let's sell, yeah, let's, why, why don't we click on a Mother's Day card here? And uh, let's actually... Let's do a Mother's Day card um, and see inspiration here. Um, we got all kinds of different stuff. There's all kinds of different setups here where you can create, like, imagine a Mother's Day card with a pizza style to it, right? So I could go over here, and I could look at, you know, something similar. So this kind of looks like an envelope. This looks like some kind of postcard. Um, and I could click, let me just click on new products and see what's new here. And like I said, there's so many different 
stuff on Zazzle. You got all kinds of different stuff. In our case, I can go ahead here and create, let's say, let's actually go back. Let's, let's create something basic. Let's create something simple. We'll click Cell, and we'll create something like this. Okay, um, so this is uh, invitations. Let's go ahead and click on the invitation, customize the design. Same process, guys, nothing too crazy. So I'll click on my files here. Sorry about that. Let me get rid of this. Let me click on this pizza design and we'll go over here to tiling, click centered. And I actually, there you go. I mean, it's, it's perfectly done for you. So that would be the difference between something that's cut off and something um, or, or an image that's cut off if it's not tiled versus it's tiled and of course if you want to show more you want to zoom out or zoom in you just drag and drop the corners here to resize and that's it it's just that simple now for a card something like this i would use it as a background as opposed to the main contents of the image if you're going to use it as the main contents just remember zazzle as a platform and i once again i've said this in the zazzle course but the main concept of zazzle is that zazzle is a customization first platform and what i mean by that is it give if it gives consumers the ability to customize options so if you just create a blank thing like this on a postcard it's going to be hard to sell sometimes because you want to add some text to it. You want to add some editable text, okay? And like I said, I, I did a whole tutorial on this in the past, but um, now, guys, when you're done fully with your design and you want to actually sell it, what I do recommend is that when you're editing the design, of course, you know, there's a lot of work to do, description, tags, etc. When you add the tags before you do that, go ahead and use the Zazzle AI Rocket Tagger uh, from Bots and Apps. They do have a uh, tool uh, for that. And the way I would do this is very simple. You could go ahead and read the directions. I don't do it necessarily on this computer, but, um, and I have videos on this, so I'll leave a link in the description for the video if you want to see it. But basically, what you would do is you would open up a new browser completely, and you would open up Zazzle and you would perform a search for something that's related. Now, pizza is a general, not general keyword, but it's, you know, somewhat general. And I would do the research first. Now, the key with Zazzle is if you're going to do the research, you want to do the research before you create the designs. So if you're going to sell only on Zazzle, if you're a Zazzle seller out there, do the research first before you create the designs. And that's uniquely for Zazzle, okay? Zazzle is unique to that. Etsy is unique to that as well. With Redbubble, Redbubble is different. I wouldn't mind if you created the design first, then hopped onto Redbubble. But to be honest, with Zazzle, you got to do that first. I, I could sit here and talk about Zazzle for a long period of time, but I'm not going to do that. I'll leave a link in the description to show you how to grab the right tags for Zazzle. There will be a whole video on that in the description description box down below. For T public, you can also upload patterns to T public. There's no rules or anything against it. I will say that a lot of the products on T public were not initially designed for patterns. So if we just go over here and type in pattern on T public, we can see here that yes, it presents t the patterns, but if you click on it, we look at something like a t-shirt. It it's more of like a boxed in approach the same way with that red bubble situation. Uh, the stickers, you can, you can kind of apply the same thing, but you know, similar, uh, the tank top, same thing with the clothing. The only things I would apply, I would say it looks good for like the mugs, the masks. And uh, let me show you how to get that done as well. So let's go over here, click upload art. And once again, this is a demo account. So, you know, once again, demo account. So we upload here and you will be able to play around and see how different things look like. Now with T public, like I said, uh, I do use many different tools. I'm not sure if I uploaded uh, anything with T public here. With uh, T public here, when we upload our design, you could see it's still going to be boxed in for the T-shirt. If we look at the hoodie, same same thing, tank, same thing. Uh, we got the crew necks, the long sleeve, the baseball tee, and so on. We got the kids T-shirts. We got the onesies, etc. Uh, the only thing that it will kind of look better on is you got, for example, the mask. Let's go ahead and click here with the masks, okay? And if you alter the size of this, then it will kind of cover it and look pretty decent on the mask, okay? Um, magnets, you know, it, it is what it is. It's not the best. Um, you know, if you go with like a circle, it might look a little bit better, right? Because 
I guess you could say this rim is a little bit better, but um, if you, what you could do is play around a little bit with the background, but even then, it doesn't, you know, do the job fully. Uh, but regardless, you know, it, you make do with what you have. Tapestry, I like the tapestry because you can scale it up a little bit, but this will require to have a little bit larger size image, okay? Um, so if you're not upscaling your images, you might want to think about uh, visiting the upscaler. Totes, what I do like about the totes, I'll go ahead and show you, is that once again, I could upscale, which is different, ironically, from Redbubble. With Redbubble, the totes are all boxed in, the the tote bags. This one, I could go ahead and scale it up and uh, make it look good. So, like I said, every product is a little bit different. Phone cases, um, generally, people do sell less uh, patterns on T public, so you can do a little bit better there, but realize that you are cutting a lot of your products out when you go ahead and, and do a pattern on T public because the the T public patterns you look here they're not going to work for majority of the main products you get you know the apparel which is uh, probably the most money makers uh, on on uh, you know T public so be aware of that and of course like I said you're going to have to scale certain designs up. Uh, for me, mugs look good, but they will require a large scale, okay? I personally would not sell it like this, with this design, the way it is. I would definitely want to scale it up, but for the, um, I guess you could say, what do you call this, guys? Do you call this a tumbler, I think? Like a like a an on-the-go coffee mug kind of thing? Um, this looks good uh, with the image, the size that it is. So, yeah, guys, hopefully this video helped out. And if anybody's curious about TeePublic tagging, TeePublic tagging is similar to Redbubble. We have a tool called uh, the TeePublic Tagger tool on bots and apps. I use this tool all the time, provide it to my virtual assistants. Like I said, TeePublic Tag Optimizer. Uh, when my virtual assistants do work for me on TeePublic, that's where I'm going to go. Uh, because you got to realize these guys are not, um, English is their second language. You know, they could be from the Philippines. And by the way, Philippines, they do speak uh, English very, very well. You know, so when they use the tagger, they kind of understand what they're looking for. And the process works the same. You guys could go ahead and see the instructions on the page here. And I'll also leave a link in the description for that uh, video if you guys want to check out how it works as well. So this is an action-packed video, a lot of information here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you guys for watching, and peace out. Bye.